Hey everybody, Aaron Cowan, Stage Dynamics. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at ballistics on the vehicle body. I'm down here in uh, Altair, down in Florida, teaching a, a two-day vehicle class, and I decided to go ahead and film some of the vehicle body ballistics because there's a lot of disinformation, misinformation, uh, myths, half-truths, and outright lies when it comes to vehicle body ballistics. Now, what you're going to see is the ballistics portion of the class, but I can't. I'm going to underscore it now, and you'll see it underscored again. The ballistics on a vehicle body are very dependent on the age of the vehicle, the type of the vehicle, the manufacturer of the vehicle. There's a lot of different facts that go into um, the inconsistencies you can see on vehicle bodies. And it's just impossible for us to shoot every single vehicle body in a class. However, there are some consistencies and that's what I mainly focus on when I teach ballistics on the vehicle body. So again, what you're about to see is from an actual vehicle class. Alright, so what we're going to be talking about is ballistics on the car body. The thing about cover, who here is taking a class where they use cover? Did you use cover or did you use cover? cover. Use blue barrels? <laughs> Maybe a wall made out of plywood? Yeah. Now what does that do? It a simulates trait. an object, right? It teaches you how to physically manipulate the environment. But <laughs> does it actually demonstrate what stops bullets and what doesn't? If you think about what's available in the real world, what is the most common object you're likely to encounter? The car. Cars are everywhere, right? There's at least one car for every human being on the planet. You go to a parking lot, it's a it's it's a room full of cars. Then you think about places where you're most likely to need to use a weapon in self-defense. You could be in the car, or you could be near a car. Does that mean the car is the best choice for cover? No. Absolutely not. However, border, boulders are not portable, and they're usually not conveniently placed. What other objects are available to you out there in the world? You got trees, fire, fire hydrants. hydrants Stuff like that, uh, curbs, parking bollards. Most of the real life cover objects that are available to you are not realistically sized. Uh, but if we're gonna operate vehicles, if we're gonna drive in vehicles, if we're gonna be around vehicles, doesn't it make sense to actually understand the, the ballistics on. on the car body? So the whole purpose of this section of instruction is not saying this is the best choice for cover. Barring a better place to be, I want you guys to understand how to use the vehicle body as an ad to an advantage. Especially those of you in law enforcement. Your gunfight is going to happen in a car or very close to a car most likely. And understanding the best way to manipulate this vehicle body to your advantage against your opponent is going to give you an advantage. And that's what we want to understand. So I'm not trying to say, and I have to underscore this, that if there's, better, if there's a better position of advantage available, that you should stick with the car. But based on your situation, or based on your location, the car may be all you have. So since the car is a part of reality, and we have the opportunity to use it, let's learn what ballistic advantages and disadvantages the car is gonna provide for us. Make sense? Yeah, cool. So what we're gonna do first is, I'm gonna do some magic tricks. What we're gonna talk about first is what soft cover the vehicle offers. What is soft cover? Cover that can be penetrated? Cover that can be penetrated after an indeterminate amount of time. Um, I don't really like the term soft cover. Uh, I tend to go with this. What is cover? Cover is any object that will stop incoming fire for an indeterminate amount of time. All cover will eventually be defeated by gunfire. Some cover will last hundreds of hours of continuous gunfire, such as like a 600 pound granite boulder. It's gonna take you a while but a red brick wall or a cinder block wall or something like that, eventually somebody's gonna be able to chip through it. Um, okay. So my definition of cover is it'll stop bullets for an indeterminate amount of time. Uh, concealment is anything that will hide your physical, hide or distort your physical form, but is unlikely to stop bullets. And then there's deflection, which is any object that will consistently deflect rounds away from their point of aim. So do you think there's any objects on this vehicle that cause deflection? Yeah. Yeah. We've already learned that, right? You guys already shot through the windshield. Did you have a little bit of deflection? Yeah. So now let's see what happens when we when we we make two windows together. Now this rear window has already been shattered. I'm going to shoot through the back window, through the windshield, trying to hit my target. Is that a realistic shot to make if you're using a car for cover? Yeah. yeah Could yeah. you have to get down behind the trunk because you got to fight from the rear of the vehicle and, and punch out and shoot through this rear glass? Yeah. Yeah. So, <clears throat> do you want to know what the bullet's going to do? Probably Is that yeah. data you need? Yeah. Let's see what happens. Well, first I'm going to go ahead and do it with a handgun. And then we'll do it with some rifles. <laughs> Going hot. Going hot. My point of aim is the A zone. Nothing. Where'd that bullet go? In the car. 
In the car somewhere. Magic! Top of the windshield. If you had to guess, the, where would you say the round is? The dashboard. Roof, dashboard. Back seat. And the roof. Mm -hmm. Oh no, this is going down? Yeah. In the dash, the chair. Yeah. So, I just fired around through the rear windshield that was already broken. And it did not exit the front of the car and hit the target. That's one round. Now, if I'd fired two, do you think the, the rounds would have hit? Maybe. And we'll find out. So, what does this tell us about windshield to windshield? Does the, is that, would, we, would we classify that as deflection? Yeah. Would we get deflection? Now, what is one round, right? It's only one round. But get out of the mentality of shooting at targets that don't move. If all I have is the opportunity to fire one round, would I have gotten a hit? No. So what, do I, what would I have to do? Either I'd have to burn a hole, or I'd have to work over the top of the car or down one of the sides. So think about it transversely. If your bad guy is about to pop rounds at you from the front or the rear of a vehicle and he's shooting through windows, do you have at least a moment of deflection to use for your advantage? Yep. Yeah. So, what did we just learn? You've got cover. A split second. You've got a split second of cover available, and it may last a little bit longer. Is that a lot? No. But, what's the alternative? Not having that. Not, Not having that, right? So we want to know that this exists, and now we do. Now let's see what happens if I try it with a rifle. You think a rifle will do a little bit better? Yeah. Let's see what happens. I am shooting 75 grain boat tail hollow points. We'll see how they do. Your ears. Ooh. Looks like I got point of aim, point of impact on the rifle. Yeah, it went right through. Now, do you think that's because the rear windshield has been compromised already or because it's a rifle? I think it's a little bit of both. So now we have a compromised rear windshield. I'm going to go back to handgun. Why, why is the handgun more important? That's what you That's carry. It's probably what your primary defensive weapon is going to be, right? Because if we're going into an expected gunfight, we're using rifles, right? Mm -hmm. But handguns are for unexpected gunfights. So I'm going to switch back to the handgun, and I'm going to see if I can get a hit. Anything? Nothing. No. All right, let me try harder. <laughs> I was finally able to work through that windshield and get some hits. There you go. Do any of those hits look clean, or does it look like them rounds are keyhole? Yeah, they're pretty jacked up. Yeah, so we got some keyhole rounds, didn't we? Yeah. Are they hits? Yep. Yeah. yeah. So how did I get my hits? Repetition. Had to, I had to dig a hole in that rear window. So now we've gotten just the beginning data, which is rear to front, front to rear. Um, what about the vehicle body itself? Do you think rounds that enter the rear of the vehicle are going to go all the way through? No, no. But could they potentially deflect out of the car? Yes. That's kind of information. Go ahead and shut that door. <laughs> so I'm going to kick things off. My goal is just to see how far into the vehicle the rounds travel. That's all I'm looking for. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know they bounce off like a motherfucker. Oh, now, you just jump, one straight line in the back of the trunk. Four rounds. You got one through the seat. I got one, two, three, four. That entered the vehicle cab. You got one that went through the front seat. You got anything up front? Yeah, one went through the front seat. It hit the front the dash. The radio's dead. Radio's dead. Radio's, radio's dead. dead. Airbag's dead on passenger side. So it did go through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah. what's what's always going to stop it? People. In, the in engine block. block. Or people. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> back seat people. <laughs> did any of them deflect out of the vehicle? Ah, oh, uh, one on the left almost did. <clears throat> cool. <laughs> now we're looking at a car from the flank. Um, we're still talking about the glass. So I've got this window and that window on the other side. What else? Is, what else is a concern about this window? What else has it got going going on for it? Tinted. Tinted. Do you think the tint will factor into something? Yes. Yeah. 
Okay, now modern vehicles, Mercedes has been doing it for a while, but now everybody's doing it. All vehicles 2015 and newer are now laminate glass on the sides as well. It's not polycarbonate like the windshield, but the glass, is, it acts much the same way. So it doesn't, it's not safety glass anymore. Hmm. It doesn't just shatter and go away. Do you think that would cause potential issues with, with shooting? Yeah. Yep. So what I'm going to try to do, same thing. I'm going to try to shoot through this window and hit my guy over there. Get a mental snapshot. Make Kill sure. that wasp while you're in there. You want yeah, to mark them? You want to mark them up? You got a pen? You got a, you got a marker? Just go ahead and mark them up real quick. I'm going to be shooting. Uh, I'm going to be shooting 124 grain gold dot, and we'll see how it performs. That was about point aim point impact. Is the glass intact? Yeah. Okay. Now, do you think if I introduce a second angle, that it will cause any meaningful deflection? So I'm gonna I'm gonna hit him from off angle. Well, I'll probably do it this way because I got more windshield available. So I'm gonna try to get him at a slight angle because we're not always gonna be able to angle perfectly, right? So let's see what happens. Point of aim, point of impact. So the glass on this car is not causing meaningful deviation between the two two windshields to hit our target. Now, if the pistol performs that well, do you think the rifle would? Yeah. Yes. Probably. But if you look at the holes, what's wrong with them? They're taking glass with them. They're taking glass with them. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. I don't care. But do you think that's affecting the, the uh, terminal, the terminal ballistics, ballistics of the round? Is it yeah, not? Probably. Is it losing a lot of energy passing through these two windows? Yeah. Probably. Now, I fired two rounds through this glass. The windows are still intact. Is that bad? Mm. Not really. But if I'm using this vehicle as a fighting position, can that be an issue? Now I've cl I, I really can't see. So I gotta get this glass out of my way. So just be aware of that. Um, one of my favorite reasons for carrying a weapon light is the light itself acts as a standoff device. So I can press the light against glass and have that barrier. And I can use the light to clear glass out of my way, things like that. That's just something I like. Um, Cause I don't wanna get my hands all cut up if I can avoid it. You think these windows would act any different? No. No, they, these windows are not gonna act any different. Now, Looking at the vehicle body itself. <laughs> I like the whistling. Like All right. The so, lower, not based on everything you know about the vehicle, what's the best place to be to not get shot? Pillar, motor, engine block. Fire. Engine block. Everybody says engine block and axles, right? Well, mm -hmm. old car. What on this wheel is actually going to stop bullets? The brake pad. The disc. The, the, disc. the rim, maybe. The rim. Is the tire gonna stop bullets? Nope. So anytime you hide behind a tire, just be aware that the whole thing isn't covered. It's just the rim. Mm -hmm. And it's only the parts of the rim <coughs> that are not exposed all the way through. And then you got the rotors and the discs and everything in there. Rims are still pretty good at stopping most bullets. Um, they they tend to cause a lot of spalling and deflection, depending on the type of rim. But the tire itself, it's not this big, it's the size of the rim. So if you're crouched down behind a truck tire, and if someone shoots the tire, better believe it's probably going all the way through. Yeah. Then we've got the engine block, right? How far forward does the engine extend? Does the engine go from here all the way to here? Oh, no, no. No. So is this a good place to be? No. no. Probably not. Now, there's headlights in there, maybe radiator, some other stuff. But you want to get behind the engine mass. So this A-pillar hub area is a really good place to be. And I'm, we're going to prove it by shooting it. What else do we have? B now, B common belief is, old school common belief was that was it. That was where you had to be if you had to be anywhere. But what we understand now are there are other parts on the vehicle that do stop bullets. We have these pillar zones. This is the B pillar. It extends from the roof to the undercarriage. C pillar area, C pillar hub, designed to protect the gas tank in the event of a rear collision. If it's designed to protect the gas tank in the event of a rear collision, would you probably, would common sense make you think that's pretty strong? Yes. Why is the B pillar and the A pillar and the C pillar so strong? Support of a roller. So they're designed, they have to, by law, be able to support the weight of the vehicle in a roller. In a roller, yeah. So by design, they're designed to support a lot of weight of the vehicle being upside down. Incidentally, that provided us with a zone of the vehicle that's really good at stopping bullets. Make sense? 
Now, obviously, you can understand it in theory, but it's so much better to see it. I will say this, and this is my caveat. You're only getting 28, 30 inches, whatever, of vertical. The horizontal cover that you're getting is actually not much at all. Nothing. You're getting four to six to eight inches depending on the vehicle and depending on where we're talking about, height-wise. If I'm given the choice between no cover and a 20 by eight inch piece of cover. Yeah. So if my gunfight happens here and I'm only here for a few seconds, is this a good place to be? Yeah. And that's kind of what I want to underscore. I'm not saying this is the best place to fight from. I'm saying if you get stuck here for a short period of time, this is a good place to be. And then you think about the times when there is nowhere else to go. If I'm working from the rear to the front, I can stop along the way if I have to, mm -hmm. work in the vehicle body. So I just want to make sure everybody understands that I'm not advocating this as a position of advantage. I am instructing you that it does provide cover if you need it. Make sense? Yes, sir. Yeah. Cool. So now we're going to shoot it and we're going to see how it goes. If and again, we go back to that consistently inconsistent, right? Every vehicle is going to be a little bit different. Would you say that a 1960 or a 2015 model year vehicle provides more cover? Older model. What's that? Older model. Newer model. Oh. You wouldn't think so. Yeah, you would think it would be because it was made out of more Think dense. about back in the day, they had vi like virtually no safety loss. Oh. Uh, Mercedes, you can find them on YouTube. Mercedes put out a, some really good videos of them crashing 1960 Mercedes into modern Mercedes and the modern Mercedes completely disintegrate the older ones. Um, I've done body ballistics on a, on a 1960, I, can't, I don't know the exact year, it was a Buick Riviera, and we were punching through everywhere, except the engine block, the transmission, and the axles. And that's a solid axle car, too. So what we're going to be looking at is the data on this Ford Taurus. Does this data apply to a Kia? Yeah. No. It does, but not specifically. So you're getting the same, it's basically like it's in the same category, but it's not the exact same data. And that's one of the most frustrating things about vehicles is there's so many different types of cars. And it would be great if you could go to a class and I could be like, hey, what kind of vehicle do you drive? Okay, we'll make sure we have one there. <laughs> this class would be like $38,000 per student. <laughs> uh, or more if you drive some kind of premium vehicle. But I do. with enough of I us do. instructors out here running these classes, hopefully we get data on a vehicle that's similar to yours. Um, so if you drive a Ford Taurus or something similar from Ford, you're going to get some really good information. So what we're going to do is um, I'm going to allow you guys, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to demo the rifle. And I'm going to use the rifle to underscore the point that these pillars do stop. Now how many points of cover do I have? Some people teach 16, some people teach 8, some people teach 6. I just want you, I, I, don't, I don't want to get wrapped up in the numbers of cover. I just want to identify places where bullets are likely to be stopped. Because the, the three and then three on the other side, right? Because the, mm -hmm. the three on the other side are academic unless I'm over there, aren't they? Mm -hmm. So for me, pillar zones, good to go. But rear and front of the vehicle have to be considered as well because your threat's going to move and you need to move with them. Right. So those are always on the menu as well. If he starts to run around that car, like, you know, the do 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 that kind of shit, <laughs> um, you want to be prepared to move rearward and fight or aggress or however you're going to do it. But let's go ahead and get some data and see how it goes. Yes, sir. So I'm going to go ahead and shoot the remainder of my magazine. 75 grain Botel hollow points. Let's see how it, let's see how it goes. You think we got any punch through? Let's take a look. Smoke. Smoke. I think we may have started a fire. We didn't start the fire. You got that seat though. You want me to grab that extinguisher or you want me to get it? No, we're good. There's a couple on that on that pillar. Yeah, they're there. on the pillar. Yeah. So did they transverse all the way through the vehicle? They didn't come out. Nope. Did they nope. come out? Did they come out the other side? No. Nope. Didn't look like it. So if I had pillar to pillar against my threat, and that's where his rounds hit, because he was shooting at me and I was behind the pillars, would I have been protected? Yeah. Is it ideal? No. Absolutely not. But if it's that or nothing, I'm taking that every day of the week. Mm -hmm. So now, who wants to do a science experiment? Yeah, yeah. science. Yeah. Hold my beer. <laughs> Give me another magazine of 75 grain. 
stand on that side. Where's John at? Guilty. John right behind me. Just keep going until we get punched through. The window? You, you wanna, no. You wanna, you wanna the pillar. pillar. You wanna get your Just eyes eat up? up that pillar. To him or to other people? I pillars. want rounds coming out the other side of the vehicle. Let's okay. see how many rounds it takes. Yep. That might work. You got it. Sub them away right there. Hey, you gotta make that group a little bit smaller. Man, Let's go one to round. One, <laughs> one, one round. I, I want I want everybody to understand that we had one round leave this side of the vehicle. On a rifle. On a on a rifle. And I got one through. Fuck yeah. <laughs> and, and, and there was a deviation too. Yeah, and it was it was deep. Well, if you were crouched down here, you still would have been hit. I, I, we gotta understand that. But did this area of the vehicle provide sufficient cover for a short period of time? Mm -hmm. So would you would you would you go ahead and agree with me that that's soft cover? It's good for for a very small period of time. Sorry, yeah. And then we got to move. Right. So if I had to stop here and get off a few rounds on my way to the engine block, or transversely coming back the other way, it's available. We can't pretend like this area of the vehicle doesn't exist. Now let's shoot some other pillars. Yeah. By an inch, one by a mile. We look we look at the B pillar. Now we're going to look at the A and the C pillar. If you have a Suburban or an SUV, do you have a depot? Mm -hmm. And on and on and on and on. The general rule is the middle of the vehicle nearest the driver's head is going to provide the strongest support because it's like a roll bar. So do you think the A and the C pillars are going to be provide as much protection? We don't know, right? Don't know. Possibly, but we don't know. And I, I'm saying I don't know because I've seen so much inconsistencies. I know like a Honda Civic uh, shot a 2004 Honda Civic. The B pillar was all right. The A pillar was pretty much non-existent, but that C pillar just took everything, which was really strange. Because usually the C pillar, in my experience, provides the least amount of, of deflection and, and cover. So, who's shooting? Because somebody put some handgun rounds on this. What I want is give me six or seven rounds and follow that A pillar from here on up. And when you shoot here, get on level with it. So if we see it punch through the other side. Taking bets, what do you think went through the other side? Let's take a look. Top one maybe? Top one. I think the lowest one. Damn, so what you shooting? Well, where'd, uh, all them, uh, where'd all them bullets at, guys? <laughs> Nowhere. Magic! Nowhere. This one went over with I, I didn't hear anybody say Alakazam or anything, so. Okay. <laughs> Burn them. All right, let's take a look. <clears throat> At least the car's not going to be that hot anymore. <laughs> one round. Nice. Mm -hmm. We got one round exiting. Where do you think those other rounds went? Into the, the C pillar. Probably yeah. spalled out inside the car or never left that pillar. Yep. We got three, two exits. We got four exits on this side, so it must be somewhere in the vehicle. I think and we got two that, that, so we only got one hole there? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. And it looks like, what well, we think, well, it looks like it rode the headliner all the way over because it took a whole lot of fluff with it. And inside here, we, we have four holes, so they're stuck in here. All right, burn them. Well, let's take a look. So you think it's safe to say that the trunk section doesn't provide very good deflection? <laughs> yeah. Some of those came out keyhole, but they came out, right? Yeah. Damn. Oh, how nice. They opened the trunk rows. All right. Yes. Now what about uh, that AK into the uh, the engine block? Nothing. Nothing came out, right? Which kind of reinforces the point. The engine block is going to provide really good cover if you can get it. All right, handguns. Now we're going for the doors, the doors only. The doors shouldn't provide any cover or deflection, right? So what I want, let me get one shooter on the driver's side, one shooter on the rear passenger. I want five rounds randomly on both doors. Bike or handgun? Handgun. Self-fist ammo only if you got it. Or just 
shoot them all in one place. You want it around? <laughs> Spread them out. Malfunction. Take me. Cool. Nice crew. <laughs> so how many rounds do you guys think you fired? Um, I fired 11. You fired 11 rounds. How many did you, How many came out? Two. Two. Three and a half. Um, no, that that's one? the right Lisa, one. how many rounds did you fire? Right here. You, so you fired a, you fired a, a duty size magazine, and how many came out the other side of the vehicle? Yeah. Zero. So, is that consistent for this vehicle? Yeah. Now, Ish. would you think that, that as, as a vehicle manufacturer, that they're going to build doors often in the same way, regardless of vehicle type. Mm -hmm. So their trucks, their cars, they want to they want to limit the number of processes they have to do, right? Yes, sir. So would you say that doors are often constructed the same, regardless of vehicle type? Yes. So did these doors stop more bullets than you thought they were going to? Yeah, I did. Who thought they were all just going to burn all the way through the car? I kind of had it. Well, I mean, shot... that's the way you made it seem when you opened the statement. It, it's, Unless it went through the, the seats, I think I thought it was going to go. All the way. Well, it wouldn't. It wouldn't have flown in court. There would have been an objection. You're right. <laughs> I'm going to assume that. <laughs> I'm going to say that. <laughs> I'm going to assume that that more that tells me that we're Yeah, safe. I know. I'm <laughs> jealous. <laughs> All right, so for handgun, shit, we had one more round come through, right? Two more? Where's the other one? There was only one, wasn't there? No, there's two on this. And there were two holes. So we got one. We got one new hole with the handgun in the rear door. So would you say that those doors are significantly compromised at this point, and it's still keeping all the rounds from coming through? Now the 308 set the car on fire. Um, I'm not surprised at all that the 308 was coming through. Um, engine block with 308 now? We're gonna try that next, yeah. So how, how, how many did we get through with the, we had three from the beginning or? We had two so handgun yeah. at first and then we had an additional one. Okay. Eric, uh, I have so a mag. odds aren't great on the handgun yeah, passing through the doors on this yes. particular vehicle. I have to get the mag. Chuck, he really wants to load his mag. <laughs> All right, so give me some, uh, give me some 308 on that engine block. Really feel the room out. I want you to take full advantage of your of your palate. Give me some towards the front too. Smokey over here. Oh shnikey. Holy shit. Okay. I squeak out, but it didn't. How's it looking inside? <laughs> so what did we learn? Just Engine off of ballistics, cool. what do we know now? Carry Engine, block Engine, block. Engine block is awesome. Yeah. Which, which you know, that was one of those. That's one of those those bits of information that's out in the world. That's we just confirmed it. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Because when I teach a class, my whole goal isn't to dispel myths necessarily, as it is to dispel myths and reinforce good knowledge. So we've confirmed on multiple calibers that the engine block is a really good place to be. But if you can't be there, are there other places on the vehicle body that are good? Is the whole vehicle covered? No. Absolutely not. How'd the trunk do? Shit. Horrible. But on some cars, the trunk does okay. But I've seen the trunk fail more than I've seen it succeed, so this is not a place I'm going to hang out in if I can avoid it. But if I move over six inches, is this a good place to be? Yeah. If that's all I have, if I can only, if this is where I have to be for two or three seconds, is it a good place to be? Awesome. Better than nothing. So the vehicle provides more cover than just the engine block, but the engine block is the best cover on the vehicle. It's also the largest piece of cover on the vehicle. What else did we learn? Uh, you can get good deflection from windshield to rear window. So if you have to fight front to rear, rear to front, and you got to shoot through the glass, does that tell you that you're, you're going to have deflection and probably miss your threat? Mm -hmm. If he's shooting through the glass, what does that tell you? Yeah. He's going to have deflection, he's probably going to miss you. Can you use those windows as cover? No. But at least now you know that if you get caught in a snapshot in that single sight picture, you're going to be okay as you're moving. 
and just be aware that if you have to engage a threat from the rear or the front of the vehicle and you guys are basically both using the car as well, this cover works both ways. Six or seven rounds on <laughs> you need to You need to eat a hole through that window to get a hit. Or you need to work over the top, underneath, or from the left or from the right. Mm -hmm. Cool? Yeah. Um, this is my favorite part of the class. The drills we run are great. I love I love letting people shoot from the vehicles and learn how to work their holster and the seat belt and everything like that. But to me, this information right here is priceless because what other kind of class can you take where you're gonna use cover and actually get to see the cover instead of something that simulates cover like a blue barrel or a notch wall or a ladder or a piece of plywood or something like that. Blue that stuff stopping. simulates objects, but it doesn't actually let you shoot them and say, holy shit, this, because I'd love to drag a fire hydrant onto the range or a parking bollard, but it's usually not realistic. So here we go, we got cars, which is cool. And this is just proof positive a car is a horrible investment because somebody paid Somebody paid MSRP for this thing, and we're shooting it. <laughs> Depreciation value, it just went downhill. Uh, I think it just went up in learning value. Though. Yeah, so Economic it did, the, the car did give us a final gift. So what you just looked at was identifying hard and soft cover on the vehicle body. That was that particular vehicle type. That was a Ford Taurus, uh, early 2000 model. Um, would an older vehicle be better? Would a newer vehicle be better? These are questions that you have to reach out and find for yourself. You can't just assume this or that. Uh, when it comes to cover, vehicle classes are one of those few types of classes. You remember from a recent video I did on, on ideal uh, reality, cover reality. Um, sometimes we just simulate things. A vehicle class actually lets you get to see if certain parts of a vehicle will stop fire or not. Like the engine block. We saw the engine block stops pretty much everything. We shot that thing with 308, 762 by 39, 556, 9 millimeter, all high quality ammunition. Uh, the engine block was reliable. But you may have seen other parts of the vehicle stop bullets that maybe you thought that part of the vehicle wouldn't stop bullets or wouldn't provide the degree of protection that it did as far as soft cover or hard cover is concerned. So in all things, trust but verify and make sure you understand the context of what you're looking at when it comes to identifying what is or what isn't covered. Sometimes things aren't black and white. I'm Aaron Cowan with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly. Hey everybody, Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at ballistics on the vehicle body. It was a little too late. <laughs> one more time. <laughs> All right, let me let me film a serious one. I'll have that one. Oh, I, I can't cartwheel that many times. <laughs> yeah. All right.